Good morning. Can we begin our service by joining together with a moment's prayer? As we meet in the presence of God, although we may not be physically together in one place, we know that spiritually we are all joined together and united with, as one with a greater purpose. At these times, our thoughts go out into the world and we remember all those who have taken their transition in the last few weeks and particularly the families that are coming to terms with their physical loss especially those who do not share our understanding of everlasting life. We ask for strength for the many thousands of people around our world who are helping and working to support those that have fallen ill with COVID-19. The workers in our hospitals who are giving so much of themselves, oftentimes with no regard to their own safety or care. We know that healing is a very powerful and potent force in our world. And equally we know that we can direct that power through our prayers and through our minds. And so, as we join together this morning, let us truly unite with one greater purpose, that the pathway of humanity may be supported and inspired through the power of the love of our Father God. Amen. This reading comes from Emma Hardinge Britton in 1866. It's called The Philosophy of Prayer and was originally published in Questions Answered Extemporary. This is a small abridged section. The Philosophy of Prayer. It is the inevitable appeal of the child to the father. It is the necessity of our souls. It is the link of connection which God himself establishes between himself and his creatures. We often know not why we pray, but we do so when we feel our spirits yearn for a communion with our author. 
and our souls are too full for mortal utterance. And then it is that we must bow down in prayer. And we know that nothing but communion with the fountain of all spirit can hear or answer prayer. I claim that the philosophy of prayer is first the expression of our relation to the great spirit. Next, the recognition of our faith in and dependence upon his almighty care. I believe too it is the voice of God speaking in our own heart's yearnings. We must pray and the effect of prayer upon ourselves is to bring us nearer and nearer yet to God. Prayer connects us with him by drawing us up to him. It is the soul's foot pressing into the temple of his presence. Prayer is the grandest, sweetest, holiest privilege that is granted to man. It is by prayer that we raise ourselves from the gravitating arms of matter that are drawing us down and obey the grand magnetism of the central mind that is seeking to draw us up to himself. We cannot in mortal words or speech or set forms dictate to you how to appeal to the infinite the spirit pleads for us itself alone. Let your own spirits arise and go to your father after their own needs and aspirations. Trust that in this mode you commune with the great spirit as only spirit can. God is nearer to your spirit than any being else can be who would make prayers for you. Pray for yourself and you shall find in your nature a spiritual answer that none but your spirit can interpret, that words cannot render. That does not admit of being formed into a philosophy. Philosophies are but the creeds, dogmas and set forms by which we seek to define scientific principles and understand the fundamental laws of matter. Prayer transcends all philosophy. It is in the strength of prayer that human hosts avail not against the resistless power of spirit. The soul that prays and realises the actual presence of the great spirit to whom it appeals is unmoved by all that man can do against it. There is no philosophy in prayer. Prayer is the spirit's voice of man's appeal whose answer is in itself, whose best response is in utterance, when the tones of faith Direct it to the throne of him who ever hears and ever answers prayer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honour to be invited to address you this morning on behalf of Edinburgh Association. My mind is taken back to the time when I was able to join you in Edinburgh for the dedication of your centre, a new home for your church in the Arthur Conan Doyle Centre. At this particular time, we hear much about the unprecedented nature of life as we are experiencing it today. But what does that mean to us? It is without doubt that each and every one of our lives have been affected in some way. Many at this time may be concerned about loved ones. 
people that unfortunately, because we are isolated in our respective homes, we cannot reach out to. But we know that through the power of the Spirit, we can truly reach out. And although we miss that physical presence of our friends and our loved ones, we know that the resolve that we will need to get through this present situation will sustain us at this difficult time. Unprecedented means something that has never happened or been experienced before. I'm sure there are those in our community, perhaps a little older, who can remember back to the war years where life was so very, very different. But since the 1940s and the declaration of peace that we have celebrated in recent times, life has progressed in so many ways. And certainly here in the United Kingdom, we are free to be able to worship in the way that we choose. We are free to be able to express ourselves and our own understanding. And as spiritualists, that is so important. Because through being able to express our own spirituality, which is innate within each and every one of us, it brings forth a greater depth of understanding to our physical life. It also helps us to reflect and find meaning in the many experiences that we have to have in our lives. Experiences that at times perhaps we don't understand. But it is only by looking back that we see the true value of what we have passed through. I'm sure at the moment many of us are struggling to see anything positive in what's happening in the world today. But rest assured, there is always, in all aspects of our lived experience, a balance. Whether we talk of good or bad, whether we talk of pain, or whether we talk of joy, there is always that element a balance, the positive and the negative, working together to create a more harmonious state. And if we can find that harmonious state in our own life and our own being, then we have much to be grateful for. Myself and members of the National Executive Committee have over the last few days been calling every church in the country. The purpose behind this is to reach out, is to remind people that they are important, as important and necessary parts of the spiritualist family. And although we are all widely spread, both throughout our countries and also throughout the world, that bond remains. That bond of strength that we can and should seek to draw upon. And in speaking to the presidents and officers of the many churches that I've spoken to personally, there seems to be a reflection. No one quite knows when we will come out of this time. Not even the government, with all their preparations and plans, 
can tell us for certain when they are going to be able to lift the lockdown. But one thing is certain, or without any doubt, we will pass through this. We will come through the other side. And then I believe strongly we are going to be afforded the opportunity, perhaps to just take a moment of reflection. The world will be different. The very life, nature of life is change. But then it will be up to each and every one of us to decide how we are going to embrace that change and how we are going to mould not only our own lives but our own communities to seek to bring improvement. Perhaps to find it within ourselves to be a little kinder, to have a little bit more care for those in our society that need our help and need our support. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know how different life may be. And I suppose the very meaning of the word unprecedented encourages us to look forward. And in doing so, I cannot help reflecting upon our seventh principle. Eternal progress open to every human soul. And I suggest that we cannot achieve that progress if we are not prepared to embrace change. And however satisfied and comfortable we may be with our lives and those that are the important parts of our life, we know that the Spirit is always moving forward and we are part of the Spirit. We are touched by that divine spark that we know as God. And as such, we can never stand still. As spiritualists, we know that that change called death is something that we will all reach at some point. But when we do, and we, when we step through that door, saying goodbye to this physical and material world, we will be embraced in the greater reality of the spirit world, surrounded by those that have taken that journey before us, that are seeking to welcome us. So at this time, let us remember the importance of the bond of community. Let us reach out to one another and in doing so, let's be proud to call ourselves spiritualists and perhaps more importantly, to put the teachings and philosophy that are the foundation of our religion forward in our lives. Change the words to action. And through that action, serve humanity and the power we know as God. May that love sustain you throughout the days and the weeks that are to come. And let us remember, we are truly part of that one great family. And in being so, let us find that care and concern and love for one another. Thank you.
Stay.